Let's talk a little bit more about swords in modern warfare, survival, post-apocalyptic kind of situations. Hi folks, so I recently did a couple of videos uh, relating to this topic and they've been uh, roused quite a bit of interest, I think, understandably. Um, but equally, quite a lot of um, people sort of with not controversial views, but I think opposing views. I think that's a better way of explaining it. So uh, some people fully accept that, you know, something like a, a knife, for example, is a completely practical thing um, to have in any kind of survival or even warfare situations. A, a knife is a super useful tool and certainly something that you want to carry around. And if we go to something a little bit bigger like the cookery, again, people don't really question it. But when you talk about swords, people go, oh, why would I have a sword for? I just have my Glock or I just have my AR-15 or HK whatever. So the fact is that people often, when you start talking about swords, go, I just have my gun. But Here's the elephant in the room, okay? Uh, the fact is that firearms, to work, really, as a useful weapon, require ammunition, don't they? So, you know, good on you if you've got your uh, Glock 17 or whatever, or your Beretta or your AR-15, AK-47, whatever you want, okay? Fantastic, yes, that is one of the best uh, weapons that you can lay your hands on. In a modern survival um, situation, war zone, post-apocalyptic, whatever you want to describe it as, okay? 100%, me as well, I shoot, I own firearms, yes of course I would, um, I would go to those um, as a primary. But the elephant in the room is the ammunition, okay? So um, certainly in the UK, we can only hold a certain amount of ammunition legally at a, at a time, okay? So if you if on your firearm certificate, aka license, it says how much ammunition you can have for that particular firearm. At some point, it doesn't matter uh, where you are in the world and what your laws are, are at some point, ammunition is going to become a very scarce resource. And certainly if you're living in this kind of problematic, shall we call it, environment, you don't have the capacity necessary to, necessarily to start making more ammunition, where you're going to get the, the lead or bismuth or whatever you're going to use for your projectiles from, copper, whatever. How are you going to make the projectiles? How are you, where are you going to get the propellant from? Where are you going to get the new um, uh, casings from? This kind of stuff. So if most normal people aren't going to be able to produce or procure new ammunition. It's not like making arrows. I mean, even making arrows is actually not that simple, finding the right type of wood, having the right tools to make it, having the time and space to make it. Uh, so ammunition is a real problem with missile weapons. So that is why things like swords are so important. If we go back to the 19th century, for example, yes, rifles, muskets and revolvers and pistols ruled the day on the battlefield. But if you've got a revolver, good on you for five or six shots. And then in, in combat, you don't have time to reload how many of those shots are gonna hit. Um, so we've got all sorts of problems, and I've talked about this many times on the channel when looking at historical warfare. The reason that swords were still so important in the 19th century and bayonets was because firearms don't have endless ammunition, it's not Hollywood, and they don't always hit and they don't always put down the opponent. There are other scenarios as well, and funnily enough, I was talking about this with uh, Lee, shout out to Lee, uh, from my club last night at training, and I, you know, we were saying, because he, he plays a certain video game, and um, we were saying there are certain situations where you don't want to fire a gun. First of all, you might not want to expend that round. You know, If it's a scarce resource, if you've only got 30 rounds of nine millimeter left, you want to make you want to really save them for when you really need it. Secondly, you might always not want you might not always want to make a loud bang noise or flash in the dark because it shows people where you are. Uh, potentially, it scares off uh, prey as well if you're if you're hunting and things like that. So something like a bow or a crossbow in some situations might be advantageous uh, for stealth uh, and quietness. Um, but additionally, you've got the you've got the issue uh, of attracting other people who might be after your resources. If you hear, and I hear shooting from where I live, there's people that use shotguns, there's also military rangers not that far away. And obviously, because I shoot, I know from the sound of things roughly what's being shot. <laughs> obviously, if it's a machine gun down at um, Aldershot, bah, 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 then I can hear that's a machine gun. Uh, however, if it's a, the kind of poof noise, I know that's a shotgun in the woods and it's someone shooting pigeons probably. So. Um, I can recognise the type of guns, but if I'm if resources are scarce and I want ammunition and I hear a gunshot, 
I very might likely go towards that gun shop because certainly if I'm with a group of people, I think there's someone over there who number one has a firearm, number two has ammunition. I want that. So without going into all of the possible scenarios, and there are many, many, there are many reasons why, number one, you might not want to use your firearm in a given moment. Number two, you might run out of ammunition. And finally, you know, there are lots of people who won't have a firearm or won't have ammunition for whatever reason. Either they have had it looted from them, um, it's, it's broken, it's gone out of order, out of service for some reason, it's been stolen, this kind of stuff. So that's one thing why swords are uh, a good thing to go to. Now the other thing I was going to talk about was scabbards, so I recently did a video as well. What scabbards are best for these kind of survivalist um, scenarios that, were, that we like to think up and is often featured in things like The Walking Dead or whatever. And a lot of people went, Kydex Matt, why didn't you refer to Kydex or any other type of modern polymer or plastic um, or modern material that could replace traditional ones? And I think a lot of people who made that comment misunderstood the premise of where I was coming at from that question. I was specifically looking at this question from, if it is me now. If it is me now and I have to choose between all the swords I have um, based on obviously the sword itself, its sharpness, its serviceability, but also what scabbard it's housed in and can I wear it immediately, I don't have any swords in Kydex sheaths or scabbards. Do you have a good quality sword in a Kydex um, scabbard? I didn't consider it as an option because for me it's not an option. The simple fact is that if I want to take a good quality sword, if it's a modern replica, you know, like Albion or something custom made, it's not living in a Kydex or plastic scabbard currently because I don't own any. <laughs> Secondly, if I want to take an antique sword, well then clearly that's not going to be in a Kydex um, scabbard. So absolutely, if you're designing a modern weapon for the zombie apocalypse or you know a modern war zone uh, taking to battle or, or survivalist activities out in the woods, then clearly you might choose modern materials. In fact, I would argue yes indeed, you probably should choose modern materials because it would be more durable, be more waterproof, all of the, it'll be light, all of these reasons. Absolutely, I 100% agree, a Kydex scabbard for a good quality sword, like one of your Albions, might be the best thing to go for. But, do you have a Kydex scabbard for your Albion? Does your Kydex scabbard attach to a belt system which you can immediately put on? If this is a situation, if a nuke drops and uh, it's far enough away that you survive it, but for whatever reason you decide to gather some things together and move quickly, which sword can you pick up now and where? Um, yes, you're going to pick up a firearm. You're not going to. You're going to pick up a knife. You'll pick up maybe a sword. You might pick up something more like a machete or a hatchet. It's your choice, uh, and you'll pick up a firearm and whatever ammunition you have. How much ammunition can you carry? Can, how much 9mm do you own? How much can you carry? You've got to carry food, water, uh, tools, potentially medical supplies, all sorts of other things. How much ammunition can you actually carry in addition to all the thing, other things you're carrying and how long will that last you? Where are you going to get some more? Do you have any plan to get some more? Bearing in mind everybody else is going to be trying to get some more as well. So actually, I don't think it's too ridiculous, certainly in the UK, Vastly more people own swords in the UK than firearms. That has a knock-on. Yes, okay, I own firearms, but that has a knock-on effect. When my firearms run out of ammunition, when I run out of black powder or I run out of uh, 45 Colt or 303 or 22LR, the three main ammunitions that I use, what do I do then? <laughs> well, I'm going to want a freaking sword, to be honest, guys. I've been training with swords for 20-odd years. 100% I'm going to want a pole arm, a bow, a firearm, a sword, several knives, 100%. So it's not a ludicrous question for someone like me. Um, if this suddenly turned into a Planet of the Apes post-apocalyptic situation, 1,000% yes, I am going to take a sword. Will I take a sword with a Kydex sheath? No, I won't, because I don't earn a good quality sword with a Kydex sheath. Um, so there we go. Uh, I will probably be taking a Bowie knife or a cookery or both. Um, and yes, I will indeed be taking a sword, in my case, with a wood and leather scabbard, because the only good quality sharp swords I've got 
um, that aren't in steel scabbards are in wood and leather scabbards. Anyway, I hope that has been thought-provoking and interesting. As always, I really enjoy um, watching your discussions and comments underneath the video. Uh, so fire away. Let me give your uh, let me let me hear some of your thoughts down below, and I'll see you back again on the video on the video on the channel again. Uh, really soon for another video. Cheers for watching folks.